Hello Internet and welcome back. See, sometimes you get a deal that's just too good to pass up on. So, a week ago, I was offered this uh, defect laser cutter. It's a universal laser, a PLS 675. It was defective, I got a really good deal on it. Uh, the seller actually also gave me a lot of acrylic, a lot of material to, to use with this laser machine. And uh, from the description of the error, I thought, well, maybe it's just the power supplies that have uh, gone wrong. Well, it turns out it isn't. So in this video and probably also the few more to come, we will go into details on how this machine works and how it is not working. The thing is that when I got this into the workshop, I found out that it was really dirty. So to get things started, before we go into all the fine details about the electronics, we, uh, I'll have to, I have to clean it, everything up. This machine is really filthy. I mean, it's not just like the, the usual debris from a laser cutter. This, I mean, this is just coated in muck. Uh, so we'll have to bring out the hot water and soap and let's rinse this baby down. The machine is from 2010, so it's an 11 year old machine. But that doesn't mean it's not working. In fact, I took out the laser cartridge and brought it to work where I have two machines just like this. Uh, this is a PLS, I have VLS machines at work. I tested the laser cartridge, it works fine. It has a little less power than, this, than the expected 75 watts. But I mean, again, the laser tube uh, or the laser cartridge is from 2015, I think. So a little less power than the advertised is to expect, be expected. I know the laser cartridge is working, now I will give it a good rinse and we will try to make everything work again. So do some magic editing. To give you an idea of how filthy this machine actually is, I'll show you something. Um, the first thing I got out was of course the cutting table here. The honeycomb is actually looking decent, but that's not the worst part. So. The next thing I took out from the machine was the cutting table. Oh, I think that's the name. So this part here, which usually goes underneath the, the, the honeycomb. And now this doesn't seem that filthy. But let's have a look on the underside of this thing. So remind, just to remind you, this is the underside of the machine. So this never gets any exposure to parts or to particles or anything. So this is just residue that has bounced around in the machine and it's actually stuck to this surface here. So there is, there is a, I mean, this is the state of the underside of the machine that hasn't seen any parts at all. Just imagine the state of the rest of the machine this is in. Uh, just imagine the, the rest of the machine. So let's, let's try to clean this. I'm starting to think this is going to take a lot longer time than I anticipated. Just have a look at this line here, or the edge here. It's completely covered. Really need to give this a good cleaning now. Actually, it comes off pretty easily as long as it just soaked a little bit. But my God, this machine is filthy. Another interesting thing about this, so the guy I got it from, we had to take it from his shed to my car to get it out. And during that 
process, we had to go through a bit of sand. So we have, of course, we managed to knock out, knock off one of the wheels. So this machine here is assembled with at least, I don't know, five, 10 maybe different size of screws. And just to make matters worse, this machine, this is an American. So all the screws are of course Imperial. That means I needed to go out and get some new tools. I, uh, I love an excuse to get new tools. I don't mind getting new tools. Have a look over there, here. I don't mind getting new tools. I like buying stuff for my workshop. But I just know that when I get a set of Allen keys in Imperial sizes, this machine will probably be the only thing that they will ever work on. And I needed to go out and re-thread the holes that the wheels were mounted in. So I also had to get thread cutting tools in Imperial sizes, of course. So yeah, and a real American, this machine. A clean American, soon to be at least. My God. I bet this machine hasn't been this clean in years. Wow, this, this really made a difference. All right, so we got the edges, we got the backside, fairly clean. Let's check how it looks. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I will leave that to dry. Make sure the center is not pinched. Well, let's see if we can do something about this side as well here. We've got a bit of, I don't know what it is, but we can clean it. And every ounce of this machine sheds of debris, it's gonna be lighter and more easy going. Yeah, so if you are laser cutting aficionado, you probably will see something that you don't like. And yeah, you can leave a comment if you want to. That would be nice. If you have the same machine here, even nicer because I have, I have some ideas of what, what work is awaiting ahead of me, but you never know. I have pulled out the main controller board already and had a look at it. Initially I thought the power supplies was was faulty as the seller described, but they weren't. They are actually working uh, just as they should and more about that later. But there was a 1.2 volt voltage regulator or switching power supply in the, on the main board that it was faulty and when I pulled that off and injected the voltage myself using a bench supply. It actually came up uh, and showed on the computer. So we will look into that in a bit. If you are regular to this channel, you will also know that I am really fond of doing one shot. So I don't like editing, using too much time for editing. But this project is so huge. This is gonna take, I don't know. It's gonna take the time it's gonna take. And we will have to do some editing. There's no way around that. So for now you will be able to see a bit of cleaning and then we'll dig deeper into the workings of the machine soon. So yeah, that's the cutting table and uh, the cutting fixture, the honeycomb. I'm not gonna clean the honeycomb, it's actually fairly clean now. So uh, let's carry on with the machine. See how that goes. All right, time to dig into the machine. This is absolutely filthy. This is just crazy. I don't think we can start with the, with the hot water. We need to start vacuuming first.
All right, so I actually had a quick look inside this machine just a while ago. The thing was that I couldn't find my tripod for the camera and I really wanted to show you guys this. So below this shield here we have a belt going through or uh, around the, the three uh, screws that raises and lowers the, the cutting board. So uh, let's see how, how it looks. Wow. This is just crazy. Can you see this? <laughs> wow. Yeah, so we need to take everything out from here uh, to get to this. Uh. So this is the set motor and the lead screw and you can see I'm just completely covered in grease as well. This is nice. There's a PCB here for the autofocus. Need to take that off and clean that as well. Yeah, wow. <laughs> hey, look at this. This is just, I don't know, this is unbelievable. This machine is gonna be so clean when I'm done with this, hopefully. And the belt, we're probably gonna change the belt as well. Set that aside for now. And there's a tensioner down here that I'm just going to remove so I can access and clean everything thoroughly. Just have a look at this. See? This is just covered in gunk. And this was below the cover. So this needs to come off in all its pieces. Let's just try this one more time. Okay, so hot water and soap. Let's see. <laughs> this is just insane. Wow. Yeah, so there's a little bit of work ahead of me, as you can see. And all the cables and connectors are just this hideous yellow brownish color now. I think they were supposed to be light gray at some point, but I don't know if that's even possible to recover. Oh, maybe I need to change all the cables as well. Wow. Let's see, let's see. I don't want to be too pessimistic about this. <laughs> I mean, after all, I want it to work. Wow. <laughs> and I just changed the water from for when I fixed the 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 cutting board. And this this is just unbelievable. This is not a few hours of cutting. This is I don't know, a few thousand hours of cutting. Wow. There's gonna be a lot of wows in this video. I know. Hopefully there's gonna be a big one in the end when I'm done and the machine can start working again. But let's, let's take one thing at a time now and see where we can get with this.
Okay, so I just removed the the back shroud thingy where the fume extraction is going on and have a look at this. This is just debris. This is not this has not accumulated over a few days or a few months. This is years. I don't think this has ever been off or haven't been off in a very, very long time. This is absolutely filthy. What have we here? Something that was cut and just got lost in the exhaust. Okay. Let's whip out the vacuum again, shall we? I was told that this machine had belonged to a toy maker. So the machine has been cutting stuff for toys for years before it ended up being sold at an auction and then going on to some previous owners and, and then ended up at the previous owner that I got it from. And I found this piece here uh, that went into the exhaust. You probably saw it just this, a few seconds ago. Uh, with, this actually looks like small doors uh, from some houses or something, I believe. Um, stuff that was just sucked into the exhaust and just forgotten about. <laughs> this is just insane. Uh, so I don't know how many years this machine has been in Denmark. Um, I was told that the toy manufacturers sold it f um, when it was out of spec. Uh, and that's most likely, let's say, five or six years ago. So this, this part has been in the machine since it was bought from the auction. Uh, so that means that this part haven't been cleaned in at least these five or six years. At least that's what I'm guessing at. Uh, the laser cartridge is from 2015. I don't know if that was before or after it was sold. Um, but no matter what the history of the machine is, I can conclude that this hasn't been cleaned in forever years so i'm tempted to just i'm gonna go out outside and pressure wash these parts because i mean wow <laughs> look at this this is even worse there's just i mean it's just cakes of material down here i don't know if you can see this it's just horrendous ah uh, wow I need to get rid of this. So, I thought this was a cleaning project, but it turns out this is a restoration project. Wow.
So I just took this part off here. Have a look at this. Absolutely, completely covered in. Yeah, I don't know what it's covered in. Just dust and debris and I don't know. And the oil, grease. Definitely needs some cleaning. And in here, we even have. Oh, need to see this. So this is the inside of the machine and this definitely looks like something has been running down the sides. I don't know if maybe the machine even had a fire inside, I don't know. And they drenched it with water and... Well, there's only one thing to do now and that's just to continue cleaning this machine and take out everything that I can. Probably also remove all the electronics Tear down the the uh, the axis here. Take off the air assist and clean everything. And then then let's try to get this thing back up and running. So yeah, more cleaning.
So I took the decision to undo the rails of the is it this AX, X or Y axis? I can't remember. Um, so I undid the screws, so I should be able to lift the whole gantry setup right out of the machine. I will further take down and dismantle everything, clean everything thoroughly. Maybe even change the belts. I think they are overdue. I undid the air assist system here, so there are no connections anymore. There is a, a ribbon cable over here uh, that I removed as well. So let's see if we can lift this setup right out. Yeah. All right. Uh, and of course we can't. <laughs> let's see if we can do it like this. Yay! Like this. So I can take out the whole gantry. I'll just put this somewhere safe, and then cleaning can continue. As you can see, the machine really needs to just be taken completely apart and assembled again. The rails, underneath the rails here, is just completely covered. So, a lot of cleaning is left still. You can see here, all this debris and, yeah. Slightly less dramatic over here on the other side, but still really needs a thorough cleaning. So, the teardown will continue. So now I have changed the orientation of the machine. Uh, I've taken off the lid as well in order to be able to get more into the machine. It was getting a bit awkward. Um, I'm still trying to take off a lot of the electronics. I managed to take off the air assist system, the intake of that. I'll have a look inside the flame sensor or the heat detector or whatever it is here uh, and see if that has broken or if, um, if it's still working and then we just carry on with the continuing cleaning here I've decided just to take everything apart as much as I possibly can and then figure out the calibration of the machine after that I think that is the only way to go when it's in this state. I mean, there's still so much cleaning. And see here, this is from under the rails of the gantry, both sides. The side where the, where the laser radiation comes into the machine is by far the worst. Uh, I'm still not completely sure what has happened uh, with the machine. I'm still kind of suspecting something around a fire or something but then on the other hand the machine doesn't have any burn damage um, it's just really really dirty still so we'll just keep on cleaning for now and then at some point we probably might be able to start assembling the pieces again so the set mechanism for adjusting the cutting table height I've taken that out, both sides, the motor side over here and the passive side with the two spindles. I've taken that out and that's on the table uh, for cleaning as well. So when I'm done with the frame itself, I will carry on with the cleaning of those parts and then start adding them back in. At the same time, we also need to take out all the cabling and look at the electronics and check each and every sensor and see if something is wrong with those. And I really do appreciate the machine's sturdiness, but also it's really hard to get into all the nooks and crannies of this machine. So we'll just take one part at a time. That's how it goes.